This is house magic number two. Once again, what you do is you go rent a house in the hood. I know, I know, I know. This is alternative income. This is some next level stuff. So you find a house in the hood for 750, 850 bucks. Now, the reason that you want a house in the hood is people in the hood often don't snitch on things that are helpful. Now, do not conflate this with people in the hood snitching. People dry snitch, people act snitch. But if you're providing a service in the hood, such as a, a beer house, uh, yes, when I lived in the West End, there was someone that sold beer out of their house. I'm not kidding you. One of the things that can happen when you're dealing with the microeconomics of people who are poor or impoverished or just making it is that they will spend money in their hood freely. So you get this house and you set it up as a resale shop and you sell furniture, you sell mattresses, you sell bikes, you sell whatever. You become the neighborhood connect. Now, this is the thing. You don't have to live there. Many people feel that you have to be there, be part of the neighborhood to a degree that is true. But if you're like, hey, when you see this sign out, I'm open. You can come over. You can look around. You can easily make three to five thousand dollars a month or maybe more. Depending on what you sell. Now, I am not here to guide you. I'm not here to be your moral compass. But if you sell mattresses, you sell furniture, you sell appliances, refrigerators and stoves, you will do very well. Now, one of the problems that you will have is if you command the attention of the police, they could shut you down. They could tell you to stop doing it. Don't really know. And this is why you want to get a house that is not on the main drag. When I lived on Glenwood Ave, which is in East Lake Atlanta, the house we were living in would have been perfect except for one little minor detail. This is Glenwood, right? And then you turn off to our street, then there was one house, and then bam, that's our house. That is a problem. It is from street view, you can check out the traffic. Wasn't gonna work. So the house needed to be more inward, and what you need to do is go talk to your neighbors. How you doing, Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so? Look, I sell stuff, I don't sell drugs, I don't, I just sell furniture and stuff. Uh, I slip you like 50 bucks a month. You keep quiet. They're going to take you 50 bucks. They probably even buy some stuff. They'll probably spend that 50 with you. Uh, this is one of the ways that you could create an income that is 100% off the books because you're selling the neighborhood folks. And the thing is, they become repeat buyers. You, you could develop an email list. You could develop a, a written hand list. And, oh, you need a tub. I'm telling you this. One of the guys that I worked in the storage auction business with, he did this. He had two houses in the hood, neither that he lived in. One house, he sold furniture, appliances. He had that stuff stacked up. Then in the other house, he sold soft goods, clothing, uh, pots and pans, dishes and whatever. And he just literally had the stuff all up in the house. He did this for years. He lived up in the Alpharetta. So he never really told me how much money he was making, but I knew how he bought. And based upon how he bought, I can estimate how much money he made. Well, one house was probably doing four to six thousand and the other house was probably doing seven to ten. So let's split the difference. Let's say he was doing 15 grand a month. He was spending about three thousand dollars a month on the storage auction trail. So minus rent and other expenses, he was clearing an easy 10 K per month. And oh yeah, he had a job. He had a job. Uh, one of the things that I knew about him because he had his auction car and he had his real car. His auction car was like a beat up little van. Then one day he comes to the auction and he's in this brand new BMW. There's a lot of ways you can do this, but let's talk about the pitfalls. One, you're in the hood. Two, more than likely you will get robbed. Three, there's unsavory characters. Um, that's kind of it. Those are some of the things that can happen. But once again, you're renting a house, right? You know, a renter's policy is like 50 bucks a month. 
let's just say you get robbed. And just like uh, what I have with my homeowner's policy, I have an enhanced homeowner's policy because I have all these cameras and stuff here. So I've got like a literally a hundred thousand dollar rider. Not that much. So you go ahead and put one of those on. And let's say your house gets broken into. They steal stuff. You go in. Oh, you get a check. Once again, the insurance company doesn't tell the internal revenue service that you got broken in. So if you prepare yourself a certain way, you can do this very easily. Now, this is just one of the tactics. This is just one of the ways. Well, there will be more. So what I want you to do is to go ahead and look at your list. You probably thought of 30 ideas that you can a business that you can operate out of home. Well, take a 30 more. Keep pushing yourself. You'll be amazed at the results that you yield.